Do you want a really cool header for your website but don't want to pay a designer to do it? Well, with Elementor and this plugin, we can get you going in seconds. Let's go. All right, we're going to start off here inside a test website that I have. And I've already got this stuff set up, but I'm going to show you guys what you need to do to get this running. If you have Elementor, you actually need Elementor Pro to do this stuff. Like all the good stuff on the web, you have to spend a little bit of money to get the awesome stuff. So if you haven't got Elementor Pro or you haven't looked at it before, jump down below here in the video and I've got some links to a review of Elementor, a written review, a video review, and to show you the really cool stuff you get with Elementor Pro. It's really worth the money. I think it's only about 50 bucks. So if you're serious about a cool website, you really should check it out. Um, and I'm going to be using that in here so you get to see what you can do with it and how powerful it is. And having headers is one of the things, the really good menus is one of the things that Elementor Pro can do for you. And once you have it, if you use a particular kind of theme or you know how to code a little bit, you can easily inject them into all your pages. If you don't have the right themes and you don't have the skills, then you can only inject it into blank canvas pages, which is when you're designing the full page from top to bottom, which you can do on your whole website if you want. But if you just want to use sort of the theme header and the theme footer and inject Elementor into those, then this is what we're going to be doing here. Really cool, really powerful. Let's jump right in. So the first thing you need, as well as Elementor Pro, is this plugin called the Header and Footer Elementor plugin. So named pretty obviously. <laughs> so just go into your plugins, add new plugin, type in header footer Elementor, and it should come up as number one. And you're looking for this kind of picture here. You'll see it in the previews. So install and activate that. And then on the left hand side here under appearance, you now have a new menu item called header and footer builder. And if we click on that, it takes us to this section here where you can create kind of like a page, but we're actually only looking to create sort of a thin element like a header or a footer. But it's the same as using Elementor to create pages or posts. So you need to click add new on the top. Very simple. Give it a name. So if it's your header, let's just call it the header. And then we can save a draft which is always a good thing to do as your first step in creating anything. And then we can click edit with Elementor, which will take us inside Elementor as per normal. So now you need to make a decision about what kind of header you want. Do you want the menu in the middle or the logo at the top? Do you want them left, right, split? It's up to you how you want to do this stuff, but I'm going to give you some rundowns on how I would do it and some of the simple ways you can do it so that you can repeat this if you're going to use this for your particular website. Oh, and just let me quickly show you if you're using this, which themes it works with. There's about four or five themes that it works with out of the box. Otherwise, you need to use hooks, which if you're not a programmer, it's not difficult, but it can get a little bit messy. So it works with Astro, which is what I'm using here. Really sweet, small, fast, powerful theme. Really worth checking out. Generate Press is another top one that's definitely worth checking out. It's a little bit different to Astro, a little bit more complex, but has a lot of options and tons of people are using it. Genesis is another one. Ocean WP is another top theme. And strangely, Beaver Builder, because this is Elementor, so they're competing with Beaver Builder. But if you've been using Beaver Builder and you're switching to Elementor and you've got the Beaver Builder theme, which helps you build websites with Beaver Builder, then that is compatible as well. Otherwise, you need to check out this button here. You need to click and look at how to do the code to get the theme header and footer replaced by Elementor. It's not difficult, but you need to do a couple of lines of code. So that's the basics out of the way. So we're creating a header and footer. And the first thing I would do is to create a 50-50 column. And then what you want to do is get your logo on the left. And I'm just going to choose a kind of a random logo that I have. Actually, let me just see what I've got in here. I've got some logos uploaded. And I'm just going to pick something really random. 
and insert that. And then we don't want the logo to be huge, so we're just going to bring this over a bit. And then we're going to go back to the Elementor Elements, and I'm going to type in uh, Menu. And you've got a couple of different elements, the WordPress menu, which isn't very sexy, but you've got the Elementor menu, which is, and that's the one you get with Pro, and has all the powerful features. Now you need to also decide how you're going to align this. Typically, I would align the menu on the right, the logo on the left. It's up to you. You can do it differently. You can even put multiple menus in here if you want to have a an upper menu with contact and stuff and then a lower menu with all your pages. But I'm just going to do a simple one here. So I'm going to right align the menu and then I'm also going to go into the column using this little column icon. If you hover over the columns you get this grey little icon. Very small and annoying but there you go and you could center align this or you could bottom align it. A lot of people like doing bottom alignment for menus. It's up to you. Uh, maybe we want this logo to be a bit smaller, so we could squish it down a bit. Actually, I would upload my logo the correct size instead of using this column, column alignment. But just for this demonstration, we're just going to squish it down here. But I would actually figure out what that needs to be. That's probably only 100 wide or something, and I would upload my logo the correct size. Makes things easier, saves you loading stuff you don't need because uh, now we're loading a bigger picture than we actually need, which is never ideal. So this menu is actually pulling, if we click on this menu and edit that, it's actually pulling from a list of menus that's created in WordPress. So if you're just starting a website and you're following along here, just make sure you have a menu created. So you need to go into appearances, menus, and then you need to add your pages to a menu, name the menu, create the menu, etc. If you don't know how to do that, look that up on YouTube. Really simple to do in WordPress, but you need a menu or menus in place in order to get them in the list here, uh, which I've already chosen the main menu here. And that's where all of these links are coming from. The menu that I created, as you can see here, it's a copy of that. So you can rearrange and drag and drop and all of that stuff. So this is just spitting out what has been created in the menus section of WordPress. But if you've got multiple menus, you can choose from the drop down. So that's a basic left, right logo menu alignment setup that I would do. Exactly where you want to align the menu is up to you, but having a center aligned menu would be weird here if you've got the left aligned logo. So I'd either do it left or right. And then what you can do in here is you can play with all the different styles and colors, which is actually insane. I would go onto the Elemental website and have a look what they have available, but I'm just gonna show you a few. At the moment, I have underline. So when you hover, you get a color and an underline, and you can change that to a framed kind of square thing. So now it's gonna reload, and now you can see that you get kind of a square around it, and you can change the thickness of that, the color of it, um, I don't know what this one does. Let's have a look. I haven't played with all of these. So that makes it kind of expand. And then you can go into the style section and change the color of the text just in general. So that makes the menu text a branded color. You should have your colors chosen for your website. So you should have two or three colors for your website anyway. Two main colors and an accent color. I would always recommend and you can change the fonts. I would always try and pick something a little bit different to normal, maybe uh, Roboto or something really clean. Let's just type that in, Roboto. It's a very clean font, but it's very small, so you might wanna increase it. And when you start sliding this, it always goes back to zero, so it looks a bit strange. And I like to typically capitalize my menus because they're easier to read. And I also typically like to do some letter spacing just to make them a bit more readable. Not too much, a few points of letter spacing, one or two you want in here, not too much. But again, if you've got masses of menu items, you shouldn't have too many, I would suggest up to about seven. Um, then yeah, the spacing can become an issue because this screen size you're looking at is my laptop. It is actually very small, but yeah, you don't want to go 
too too wide here because then when you get a smaller laptop or a tablet it's going to squish it and it's going to go below the uh, logo which is not great so you can do all of that stuff here I'm not going to spend time on that the other thing you have to be aware of is that what happens when I hover here is coming from the hover state so you need to click on hover if you want to change that so if you want to change the color of hover to light blue then we just do that and now when I hover on it it's gone big and light blue as you can see here you can change the topography on hover which I wouldn't do you can change the size the text effects all of that stuff so really powerful lots of options here and you even have the mobile menu section so this top section is the normal menu and now if we go to the mobile view or the tablet view you'll see the mobile menu appearing depending on what's going on here so we can actually align all of this specifically in tablet if you don't have a lot of menu items I wouldn't have the mobile menu appearing on tablet I would actually have my normal menu appearing and you can pick that here with these so the normal menu now appears because I only have four items if I had five or six I would maybe squish the spacing a bit more and th seriously think about using the mobile menu the hamburger but if it fits leave it on tablet it's easier to have this menu than to have the mobile menu because not everyone knows how to use it as surprising as that may be and not everyone understands it so you can change that here with the breakpoint that's the point at which things change and they've pre-programmed reasonable approximations here for you it doesn't always work on every tablet or every mobile but if we now go to mobile and look at the mobile view so that we can fix it up you've got how things are aligning here and this is quite good you could have the menu below the logo I typically wouldn't I would have them left and right so what we need to do is change the column width here because it's a hundred percent by default so we actually want to make it I don't know something like 20 maybe even 30 or 40 depending on how it looks and then you need to do the same thing for this one so now we need to go up to I think it was 70 and then we want to do a middle alignment to get it to look better and we want to go and have a look at the mobile menu and get it to be right aligned where is that where is right alignment it's disappeared no I'm not clicking on the element that's the problem so we want that to be right aligned which it isn't it must be over here somewhere or oh, down in the mobile menu right aligned there we go and what I find really odd is if you've got a, a hamburger that's kind of got a gray background and and then the colors what I would actually do is change the color of this to your branding color that's what I typically do for my clients so the toggle button as they call it you can change the background to white and then click off there and then change the color to your branded color so I would do that it's up to you but I think that looks cleaner and then your logo would typically not be black and white it would also be the branded color and then it kind of matches and is obvious you can put a background on it if you want you could make it bigger if you think it's not obvious enough um, which we can do somewhere here toggle button size so you can actually increase that a bit so that it's obvious you want it to be obvious and for people to know what to do and then if we click on it you can see that it's the width of the section we have here which is not good on a tablet it's probably okay but on a mobile what we want is we want full width which you can do somewhere down here because yeah if you've got really long menu items especially if you've got a narrow phone like an older iPhone or something you want these to be easy to tap because we're looking on a computer here we're looking on a PC at a mobile approximation but on a mobile if you make it difficult to click it's not great well, that's it for the basic how-to with Elementor and headers. I hope you learned something from that. It's a really cool way of making your headers look great without paying a designer. Pretty cool, huh? Thumbs up. Woot. 
So if you enjoyed this, give the video a thumbs up, appreciate it, really helps other people find this stuff and helps give me a boost for doing this. And if you like this video and wanna see more Elementor or how to improve your WordPress website, get more traffic, then subscribe below and I'll see you guys or you'll see me in the next video.